Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Digital Nomad World Weekly Lecture. I am Becky, and I'm going to be your host again this week. And today, I'm very excited to be talking with Surya Sanchez, who's an entrepreneur who helps clients automate processes related to their daily activities. And he also helps with digital marketing strategies and creating websites. And he also, which we are gonna talk about today, he uses his passion of dancing to connect with digital nomads around the world. So welcome, Surya. Hi, thank you for having me here. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, Surya, so let's start at the beginning. First of all, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I'm Surya. i been traveling for I think three or four years full time, at least having a remote work. And now I'm currently in a remote Caribbean islands. I just want to let you know that because of the internet connection, I hope it will be fine, but we currently kind of having a storm. So that's why it's a little bit dark because there are all the cloud and stuff, but so far so good. Um, and this Caribbean island belong to Colombia. So I've been in Colombia for four months now. Amazing. And that's the nomadic life, right? You never know where you're going to be next, but technology is wonderful. I can't even hear the storm behind you. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm really grateful that it's still working. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and what you do as a digital nomad for work and how you got into your work? Yeah, sure. So Currently, I'm having an um, IT consultancy focused on automation. So we automate all the businesses to improve their processes. So wh whether it's like downloading attachment from email or having a completely complete sales funnel, uh, funnel, we can automate that as well as accounting. So we uh, assist, we help other companies to gain more time to help the employee having more time uh, in their week. Instead of delegating to someone and waste someone uh, someone else's time, you can actually delegate to a computer some processes. Maybe it sounds very generic like this, but it could be very easy stuff that you do every day, your repetitive tasks. So um, there are also some stuff you can do personally, but we focus on businesses because we believe we will have more impact if we help bigger company, you know, automating small stuff, but that everybody is doing every day, you know. Okay, so I have to say you're the first digital nomad I've met that does the automation for a living. How did you get into this line of work? Wow, so that's a little bit um, longer story. Let's go back a little bit and the beginning of how I started to uh, be a nomad. Really, the first touch point was after my high school. I decided to go as far as uh, possible. So originally, I'm from Switzerland. I speak French and I decided to go as far as possible. And on the map was Australia. So I was like, okay, that's my dream. I want to go to Australia. Uh, let's book the ticket and the visa. And when the date was very close, uh, I uh, looked at, again at the map and I saw that there were a country even further that was New Zealand. So I was like, okay, you know what? Let's change the plan. I will go to New Zealand. When I went to New Zealand for the first time, it was more like, uh, let's say, backpacking experience. So I was going there with a little bit of saving, not so much because I wanted to get out of Switzerland as soon as possible. I arrived there, I enjoyed my time, and then shortly, quickly, I uh, run out of money, right? Uh, and then I was like, okay, I absolutely need money to sustain this lifestyle. So first I started working as a as a barista assistant. I didn't earn, especially coming from Switzerland where we have quite a good living there. I was shocked to see the difference even for New Zealand to earn, I don't know, four times less. And I was even not able to pay my rent with this kind of little job. And then I moved from this job to like a, in a wood pallet factory, fruit picking, all these backpacking jobs that I thought it was it would be fun, you know, to do as a backpacking experience, but I really didn't like it. Although I didn't like it still, I needed money, right? Because I needed to sustain this lifestyle. I didn't want to go back to Switzerland. I was very young, let's say um, 19, something like that. Actually, I have the number in Spanish coming to my mind because I, I speak Spanish now in Colombia. 
Okay, so I was in I was in New Zealand. Absolutely needed money. I I reflect back. Okay, what kind of skill do I have? And I remember that I'm kind of good with IT. So I was like, okay, you know what? Let's build some websites for people, but from my country, from Switzerland. So I start to ask around um, how it's possible to find a client. Uh, is there anybody that wants to have a website? And I found some clients. Of course, my price was very low, but still much better than helping a barista in a coffee shop. So this is how, let's say, I started to earn a living remotely. But for the moment was nothing like entrepreneurial. It was just out of making a, <laughs> to sell my backpacking lifestyle in New Zealand. So that was, oh, that was like six years ago, I think, at least. Um, yeah, actually, if I calculate eight years, it was like eight years ago, long time ago. And I continued to do that. And it was, you know, I was like sitting in coffee shop and doing website. I'm like, okay, that sounds much better than picking flower in the field or doing agriculture thing that I'm not good at, you know? <laughs> Sometimes you just need to go with your skills. And then I eventually flew back to Europe um, and continued to do that on the side, having like a remote gigs. And in Europe, I decided to, to, to focus on something closer to my country. You know, I went so far. I went to New Zealand that, that I feel I didn't even know where I'm from. I know the country surrounding, you know, so Switzerland. So I start uh, traveling around Switzerland first and then all Europe. Now I've visiting, I visited all the country of Europe. And, uh, and then I start to make this living, the side gigs, more as a main income. So I immediately uh, quit the job that I had and reshape it a little bit more structure, make it as a digital agency. And a few years ago, more or less during the, the pandemic, I had the time to reflect back, okay, you know, where do I want to bring that? This is just website, digital marketing, everything, you know, broadly. Let's go, you know, niche. Let's niche down to more like a topic that is more unique. And I was reflecting, okay, what are my values? Uh, what do I really, truly believe in? And if we jump back in time again, in the past, when I was doing high school, and there was, there were really many things that was triggering me and everything that is wasting time of people and repetitive tasks. And one of the things, um, I don't know how is it for you, Becky, back in your high school time, uh, but in Switzerland, we have to learn mathematical theory by heart. Do you have to do that also in the US? Or? Yes, I had to do that as well. So in Switzerland, everybody needs to go through this step, which is like 12, or I don't remember, 14, mathematic theory by heart, which is first very stupid, my opinion. And so also the thing- I think, I think we call it the times tables, just for somebody who may not, not know, like learning how to multiply and things like that. No, not this. No, it's... Um, That's what I was talking yeah, about. And, I know, it's um, the theory, like uh, uh, the theory of um, Pythagore, all this, the Thales. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. The, the, we, we the theorem we say in French. So it's like more advanced, but still it's like one or two pages per theorem that you have to learn by heart. Actually, it's not very important if you know this mathematic thing or not. <laughs> What's important is you just need to know that in Switzerland, we don't get the, this paper, we don't get the theory. We are supposed to um, looking by yourself at the library or, or whatever. You know, we need to learn that because the teacher think that we will learn that by researching. But look, you know the difference between UI, UX, you know, do you have a how it's designed, but actually what's the experience of the people. <laughs> so what are the people are doing there? Uh, just asking a friend, give me the paper, please. So when you ask a friend, you know, that are already graduated one year ago, uh, they will, of course, not really care. They only have one or two paper. And then you have to ask another friend. And then five friends later, it's already, you know, it takes you one or two days of, of not researching, but basically copy pasting. <laughs> and for me, when I, I saw that, 
for me was such a, a waste of time. When I saw like everybody, I don't know, 300 people every year are just collecting paper and copy pasting basically. Oh, wow. So that was a bit triggering me and I wanted to, you know, do something for humanity <laughs> for my high school years. So I, I work a little bit more for this task to collect all the paper, fixing them, uh, and then making a nice PDF, can uh, scan them all, and then send to a Facebook group to share with everybody. So that was like me, my rebellion against uh, wasting people's time. Wow. So then I was reflecting about this event happening, um, where I tried to, you know, save people's time. And actually, the, the anecdote is a bit funny because a few years later, I still get email from people like, oh, I think it's your PDF. Thank you. And I'm like, oh, what are you talking about? Ah, yeah, my high school time, you know? But this is like so a great lesson. Event. Because it reminds me, like, yeah. if you, for, for those that are, are with us right now, like, you know, think about what you're good at and even go way back to your high school. And like you said, niche down and it could become the remote job that, that you know, the unexpected job that you never saw coming that you can now use remotely. Yeah, so that was a value that I figured out when I was reflecting, you know, during the pandemic, where am I going? What kind of value I have and the value of helping people not wasting their time. It's really yeah. that. And then, okay, that's a value on how can you apply it? You know, what, what kind of methodology, what kind of tool? So I reshaped my digital agency to make it an automation consultancy. Mm -hmm. So by automating, we help people not wasting their time. So instead of, you know, you can copy paste this theorem in mathematics, but you can also actually repeat that in your, in your life during your uh, career. Copy paste uh, from, you, uh, from your colleagues, from your boss, doing the same report over and over every Friday and something like that. Instead of always doing something that is very repetitive, you can automate that. And if you need help, we can help you doing that. And we work with several companies that understood that, that actually, if you automate stuff, you know, a computer is much cheaper than a human. So you can automate two computer to do something that is very uh, repetitive and it will be cheap for them to give a high quality task to human, you know, because we designed to solve high complex problem instead of something simple that is every, all the time the same. Right. So do you have any uh, tips that we could, use, could do right now? Like something that we could, you know, uh, do for ourselves to automate and make our lives easier right now? Do you have an example? Yeah, I thought you would uh, ask me a question like this. So it's more <laughs> for companies, but yes, there are some tips that for sure I apply to my personal life. For example, you know, as a nomad, we travel, I mean, depending if you're still in the pandemic stage, but usually you travel a lot and you take many planes and stuff. So I kind of automate my way I manage plane. So I use one of the application called trip it probably you don't know it i don't think lots of people use it oh i use it trip it it where it like yes. it scans your email right and it adds it exactly. goes into an app and adds your trips come upcoming for you and sometimes with the flight so, confirmation number as well exactly so instead of you know uh, i use um app in the air to track my plane and stuff and you have to manually add it you know to see when is the checking etc so instead of adding the flight manually, or I don't know if you don't do this, any of them, but just check your email and say, oh my God. And for example, you put your flight in the Google calendar and then you forget to update your time zone and then you will meet your flight, stuff like that, that I want to avoid because I'm changing time zone every second month, you know? Um, so with TripIt, you can uh, just send the email, forward the email or even synchronize completely and it will check your email and then add it to your agenda and everything. So that's okay. one of the, let's say, little tips I can give as a personal for personal life, um, just to track your flights in a better efficiency. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, the last time I used TripIt, it was free or there was a free version. So guys, check it out. Like it, it does make your life mm -hmm. easier to keep everything in one place. Well, I do, Surya, want to leave time. I want to leave enough time for something that I know you're very, very passionate about. So one of the topics of this talk is hobbies and how you use your hobbies to meet people around the world. And for you, I know your passion is dancing. So can you tell us about how you got into dancing, first of all? 
Yeah, so um, actually that's, it's exactly an interesting question because if I reflect back, it's back to this New Zealand trip. It's good that I uh, tell it to you because um, when I went to New Zealand for the first time, as a Swiss person, you know, I try to prepare my trip. Um, and to prepare it, I, I thought I would also travel a lot of to New Zealand, but to like Mexico and stuff. So I was like, instead of just going to Mexico like a beginner, I wanted to kind of learn like salsa before arriving in Mexico to be ready. <laughs> so from Switzerland, I started to learn dancing, but actually it was to prepare my trip. <laughs> So I prefer oh, okay. my, my trip yeah, yeah, from Switzerland to be able to do some move. You know, many people are traveling to Latin America and say, oh my God, dancing, let's, let's start here. I did the step before, like I tried to prepare my, my dance before. Anyway, so yeah, I started like this to learn salsa first in Switzerland. And then, but I, I started one uh, year before my um, trip. So then I, I like it a lot and I, I was like, oh, wow, partner dancing, couple dancing. This is something I never try, never thought about it. And it's really like, I really recommend everybody to just try couple dancing. This is something amazing that I cannot, I cannot share in a different manner. This, this is just like you share something with someone. We live in a digital world when, you know, we do this interview live, but it's also very good to connect with the real world, you know? There's even more NFT, Bitcoin, Web3, whatever. But, you know, as our body, we need to connect to, to, to ground, you know, we need to ground. So let's say this is my balance, you know, like uh, if we talk back to, for example, Einstein, he was very good with uh, scientific stuff, mathematics and everything, but he was to balance his mental, he was doing some um, uh, instruments, music, you know, see, you are playing music and this thing, as a digital nomad, we need to balance our digital uh, life to be all, always online. So let's go back to my dancing. This is like salsa. Uh, I like it a lot. And then, and then I moved to bachata because I was like, oh, if this couple dancing is so nice, why not trying something else? So I opened my mind and I tried bachata, which is a little bit different, a bit more slow, a bit central. And now I'm still dancing bachata after a few years. So this is how it all started uh, before my trip to New Zealand when I wanted to prepare with some dancing. Wow. Well, I'm sure that you have connected with so many people through dancing around the world. Do you have any certain experiences that, you know, only happen because of dancing? Yeah, so I would tell you that, you know, first as a digital nomad, or if it's your first year of, of uh, nomading and you find very exciting, oh my God, you know, I can work remotely and I'm not only on the vacation, but I can sustain this lifestyle much longer. You are usually excited to explore all the country and visit it more as a tourist, right? So in the beginning, you will explore, go to maybe a hostel, party a lot. And then after maybe one year, I would say, I'll give you maximum one year of doing that. You will get a bit exhausted and a bit like, okay, but is that all, you know? And then what you can discover is traveling uh, around the world with purpose. So of course the, I have my business, you know, that I'm uh, managing and everything, but also when I travel, I'm not only doing backpacking anymore, I'm really traveling with purpose. And what's on my purpose is to connect through dancing. Dancing, it could be other sport. You know, I'm also doing kite surfing. Some of you guys probably do surfing or mountain biking or any other sport that you can connect with other people through dance through uh, when you travel. So that's one one thing I'm really doing. Is for example, I go to other places and I connect and I try to uh, fit with the through the to belong with the community of dancing. One of the experience I would say. Uh, is that now instead of just traveling random to country, I try to see for to seek for bachata events. So, for example, in Europe uh, this summer there will be a lot of dance events after pandemic reopening and everything. So I like to connect with people, you know, in different country through festival of bachata, and most of them are the same people traveling. Also, you know, usually it's more Spain, Italy, France, uh, Germany. Uh, and the people are traveling around this country, but with the, the purpose of dancing. And it's something very cool to do to, re to meet again these people. 
uh, and if they are digital nomads, it's even better. Not all of them. This is another community. You know, they maybe are from France and they travel every weekend to go to the festival. But at least you can reconnect with the same people and the pro practicing your passion, uh, which is for me bachata dancing uh, nice. across different country. Oh, well, I, I want to ask you, like, where do you find these events or how do you, are there any apps or websites? I know we're talking about dancing, but we're also, of course, extending this to anybody's hobby and whatever hobby it may be. But for you with dancing specifically, how do you find these events? It's not that easy. It's not completely digitalized, actually. It's more analog because the people are more connecting, you know, in real life. Sounds like so something you have... can automate. You should automate it, sorry. I'm hearing an opportunity. Yes, I know that <laughs> many, many ideas. So how, if you have, if any of you are listening now and I too looking for dancing uh, community, the best, like, I get this question, how do you find so, uh, so quickly the, com the community of dancer in the one city? The thing is, there's no magic. You need to connect through a party, to social, we call it, and to find where are the social happening. Usually I send messenger message, WhatsApp message, or even call local dance school. So let's say, imagine now I'm going to Budapest. I will prepare my trip a bit before because I don't expect these people to reply as like directly now. So one week before, I will send a message to two, three schools and say, hey, ha. Hello, um, that's my name. I'm going to Budapest and I was wondering if you know where are the social happening. And actually when you are local, it's so obvious for you to say, but of course it's Wednesday there. But you know, for me, I don't know <laughs> because I don't know the place, I don't know the city. Um, sometimes it could be tricky. Like, I, like a few years ago, I was in Ukraine and I did that and it was like people are not speaking a lot of English. It was like, yeah, I had to use Google Translate for Ukrainians, stuff like that. Um, but you have to connect what, 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 yeah. So the best is party, but to find party, uh, to meet dancer, you need to contact the dance school that no. Okay. Yeah. And I can also imagine all of these different events that are social. You don't know what the most up-to-date information is unless you do something like contact this dance school directly. Cause a lot of those contact mm -hmm. events have changed or the, the dance school closed. So yeah, you need to, contact actually, you know, in advance. I know. As a digital nomad, you like to find everything online, but I am also doing another sport, which is uh, paragliding. And that we can also talk if you want. And for example, paragliding, I want to find the best spot in Colombia because I'm in Colombia now. I can look in the internet, I found some stuff, but the best, at the end of the day, the best is just to go either to one school or one spot and just talk to people. You cannot uh, escape the step of talking to people, right? <laughs> I love this because a lot of our hobbies get us back to that. Like you were saying, like with dancing touch, we're not using it enough these days. We're just touching our phones or something. So yeah, I like this having to go back a little bit analog, like you said, although it's not automated, it's gonna bring yeah. you a lot of a, a big payoff by really connecting with people. Well, Surya, I want to go ahead and take some questions from our audience listening. Um, we've had a few come in and let's see. Um, do you have any information on how to get a digital nomad visa to New Zealand? So um, I like New Zealand a lot. I went to New Zealand, I think three or four times if we can create you know, the stamp on my passport. <laughs> so if you're under 30 years old, you can apply for the, um, depending of your country, of course, you know, depending of your passport, but usually you can have a um, working holiday visa. I know that I think France, Belgium, Germany, Spain, Ireland, I think Japan, Argentina are part of this program, New Zealand, Australia as well. Uh, US, I'm not sure, depend of your country. I think every passport is different. Um, but this is only, uh, unfortunately, it's only until 30 years old. But okay. anyway, this for, is a for visa. For all of those countries, to, for all of those countries, you said it's only until Depending, 30. I think, not sure. I think Japan maybe is 32. You have to check every country, you know, make their own rule. But wait, okay. this is not a bad news because this is just one of the possibility. And usually this is more for people that, you know, like me as a backpacker, you know, at 18, 19 years old, I didn't know what to do. So I just go there and this visa will allow you to work and travel. But as a digital nomad, you don't need to have a visa to work because you work remotely. You know, nobody, you don't need to apply for a job 
to have a visa. So my suggestion, and this is how I do now, and most of the normal, you just use your tourist visa as much as possible, and then, then you do one visa run, and that's it, you know. So Australia is kind of next door. You can have cheap flights. So let's say you uh, tourist visa. I'm not sure actually how, how long is it, but let's say three or six months. You, could, you do your three months there, take a plane to Australia, visit Australia, and then go back to New Zealand. So that could be a solution. Yeah, uh, really pay sure. attention to the know, days. Yeah. What, what I know about New Zealand is it actually just opens the border right now for everybody. So that yes. was two months earlier than expected. And it's, yeah, and I was actually stuck there during the pandemic. I was doing my lockdown in New Zealand. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so excited we all get to go back to New Zealand. Okay, now I have a question for you about um, being an introvert. So it sounds like, and I know you, you're, you sound like a person very open to new experiences, but if someone is more of an introvert, do you have any advice for how they could start, at, start out as a nomad? Okay, just about nomad, no about dancing, because if it's about, for example, dancing and you want to get started, but you a beginner and you're a bit shy, you know, to come to classes. Sure. For mm -hmm. example, in Latin America, it's very common to take private classes. So you can have, you know, maybe you feel better with just one to one, so you can connect with one person and it's really cheap. Like it's under 20 US dollar or even under 10 euro, you know, it, depending on how many you take. Uh, so that could be a good to start. And as a digital nomad, uh, introvert, I would say, you know, you need to know yourself first. So for example, if you need to sleep alone, but you need to, you want to meet people like without doing so much effort, you can stay in the hostel, but in a private room, for example, you know, so you have your own space, but, but just by going to your room, you will, you will have to meet people if it's what you want. If you want to travel and not meet anybody because you're introvert, that's fine too, you know? Yeah. And I would say, I would add to the hobby list. I like to run and running is one of those things you can go with the running club in so many places, but you don't have to talk. You can just run. So it <laughs> could be one of those hobbies mm -hmm. if you're an introvert to start. Um, and my last question for you from the audience is what it was your biggest challenge in your nomad journey? Biggest challenge. I think it's uh, probably to find the balance between, depending if, if you have an employee job or if you have your own business, but to, to have fun with your daily life, but also to grow your business. Because at the end of the day, I don't want to travel one year and being at the same place as the begin, beginning. Because it's also, it's not for the people telling me, ah, but are you on vacation? Is it your holiday? No, this is my lifestyle, but I want that every day I do something to also grow as a person, as my business, you know, as a partner, as a whatever you are, to grow a little bit. So to find um, baby steps that you can do, maybe not every day, but every week. For example, let's say I want to have a better health. And I decided, actually I did it. I decided to do four times a week fitness. And I did it already now, um, more than 250 workouts uh, for one, one year. I started la last year. Um, and even though, you know, I'm in this San Andres Island in Colombia now that you have a lot of, uh, I don't know, like parasailing, kite surfing, every, all the sports, but to continue deciding, I don't know, if you work on your business, take two hours every morning and to continue to, you know, so at the end of the week here on this island, I don't feel like, oh, I was just on holiday and I didn't really grow in one week. I had fun. Or you can do also, this is my way of traveling. Sometimes I have maybe one month of working hard, let's say go working and knowing, being more in a work focus mode and then one month uh, traveling. So you can have, a, I would say the challenge is to find your own balance because when you are in, in an office and you have a boss telling you what to do, it's, you know, you don't just show up and you do your work. But when you have a lot of freedom, that's really, I think, the challenge for a lot of people. Once they discover, imagine you have your own business and you don't have a fixed location. You have completely freedom to do whatever you want. And imagine you even in a country where the law are even maybe not like Europe or US. Let's say you're in Paraguay. That actually I went there a few weeks ago. And you, if you want, you can have a gun. But do you actually want to have a gun? You have to, you know, to you need to have your own discipline, your own motivation to, to keep your own value, your integrity, and also to continue to grow every day as a person or, or your business, 
So this is the balance you need to find. It's easy to, you know, go to the trap. If if mommy is not watching, I will eat all the candies, you know, so <laughs> yes. to have this uh, self-discipline. Well, thank you so much, Surya. I'm sorry that we've run out of time if there's any more questions, but if you want to reach out to Surya directly or you have questions about IT or what his company provides, please go to his website at suryasanchez.com and that's S-A-N-C-H-E-Z. Uh, and thank you again, Surya, for joining us. Uh, and everyone who's here with us, we'd love thank to have you Thank you for having back. me. You're welcome. We'd love to have you back next week, everyone, as well, for um, Josh and Kaylee from Expats Everywhere. I'm going to be talking with them about starting your own YouTube channel. And that is going to be at the same time, 5 p.m. UK time. All right, that's going to do it for today. Surya, it was great to connect. And I hope you have a great time on the island. Bye-bye. Thank you, Vicky. Bye.